66 million years ago, a huge asteroid that hit planet Earth caused one of the biggest extinction events on the planet. But even today, a lot of scientists are still not certain where this particular rock came from. But more importantly, is this going to happen anytime soon once again? Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be trying to answer a lot of these questions. We're going to figure out where this asteroid probably came from, and we're going to find out when similar such event could also occur on the planet while also discovering some of the previous events even before this event 66 million years ago. The event that's usually referred to as the KPG extinction event. The one that ended up producing a huge crater known as the Chicxulub. And here a lot of the data is going to be coming from the paper that recently came out that you can find in the description below that used a lot of computer simulations, a lot of modeling, but also sampled some of the rocks present in the crater itself in order to try to establish the best possible location for these rocks and to establish how frequent these collisions happen on the planet, while also figuring out what exactly caused this asteroid to collide with planet Earth. But let's start right here, with the image you can find in the description below of what's known as the Earth Impact Database. Here you can actually see some of the biggest events that ever occurred on the planet. At least the ones we've found so far. Obviously some of them have never been found either because they're underwater or because they've been covered by sediments for millions and millions of years. Either way, the bigger the circle you see, the more powerful the event. This one right here, the Vredefort crater that we've discussed in one of the previous videos, somewhere right there, is considered to be the biggest to date. It happened roughly around 2 billion years ago. Then, not so far away from where I used to live in Canada, we can actually find one of the biggest craters in the world known as the Sudbury Crater. This one also happened about 1.8 billion years ago. But as you can see, from all of the big circles, there's only one more left, and that's the one we're talking about today. The crater that was created by an asteroid probably around 10 to maybe 11 kilometers in diameter, and an asteroid that we've discussed on this channel many times. The previous video, by the way, that should be somewhere right there at some point, talks about the discovery of the tsunami waves that were actually created by this asteroid, and now we know quite a lot about them, including the size of the waves as the waves were hitting the shores of North America. But out of all of these craters present here, only one of them has been directly connected to an extinction event. The event that we usually relate to the extinction of dinosaurs, even though technically not all dinosaurs perished, some of them turned into birds. Although here a lot of scientists would argue with me saying that birds are dinosaurs, but I disagree. Anyway, more about this later in some of the future videos. So anyway, we know that this event happened, we also know that it caused a major extinction event and changed the climate of the planet quite dramatically, but we also know that it was most likely connected to several other major events which altogether resulted in the major extinction. So it wasn't just the asteroid collision itself, it was actually several events, including a major volcanic eruption and including another asteroid a little bit later. But how do you possibly figure out where something came from 66 million years ago, considering the fact that we barely have any information about planet Earth back then? Well, there is a way. There are two ways, actually. One of them is by actually looking at the samples collected from the crater itself and figuring out what sort of an asteroid this represents. By doing this, we can then actually figure out what region of the solar system this rock might have come from. This right here is actually from a slightly different study, a study that you can also find in the description below. But in this study, scientists were actually surprised to discover that certain relatively red objects, specifically red asteroid-like objects, such as the ones we usually find in the farthest reaches of the solar system, have also been discovered in the asteroid belt, at least two of them. And this implied to the scientists that there's actually a way for various asteroids and for various objects to sort of switch from one orbit to another through various gravitational interactions with various planets. And so here they realize that some of these rocks got shifted to a new orbit. But they've discovered this by looking at the actual compositions of various asteroids. And so here if we look at the asteroid belt itself, the one that's located between Mars and Jupiter, we will realize that most of the asteroids and most of the rocks present here generally have a somewhat specific composition we're not actually going to find a lot of these red rocks normally found at the outskirts of the solar system. And at the same time, depending on the region of the asteroid belt, we're going to find more of certain types of rocks compared to others. For example, in certain regions, we're going to find more carbonaceous asteroids, the ones that are relatively dark, the ones that don't actually reflect a lot of light, and for the most part contain a lot of carbon on the surface. 
Whereas in other parts of the asteroid belt, we're going to find more rocks that are silicate based or maybe even metallic. And so by knowing the composition of an asteroid, we can generally determine its original orbit to some extent. Or even figure out if maybe it was some sort of a comet coming from the farthest reaches, which is also of course a possibility. But then there's also a question of size. If the asteroid is really big and it contains certain materials on the inside, we expect it to be in a very specific position. And then by comparing its composition, its size and the potential orbit, we can even figure out what family it probably came from and if it has any siblings that we can maybe investigate. But more importantly, we can figure out how frequently these collisions might occur in the future. And this is the approach that the scientists took here. First of all, by using analysis from some of the other papers, they established, almost certainly, that the asteroid itself was what's known as the C-type asteroid, also known as the carbonaceous chondrite asteroid, which is essentially a somewhat dark object with a lot of carbon on the surface. And one of the more recent famous examples of this type of an asteroid is the asteroid Ryugu right here that the Japanese space agency was able to use to capture a few samples. Although this one here is way smaller than the one that uh, caused the extinction of dinosaurs. And so the combination of studies on rock layers combined with various drill core samples from inside the crater confirmed that the impactor was very similar to these C-type asteroids. But the problem with this discovery is that we don't really know of very many large C-type asteroids that hit planet Earth. And because of this, it was always assumed that these collisions are extremely rare, like maybe once in a billion years or so, possibly even longer than that. At the same time, if we were to investigate the asteroid belt as we currently know it, we're not actually going to find a lot of similar sized rocks that are C-type. Most C-type asteroids are way, way smaller, with some, very few of them, being extremely large. And the largest one is this one right here, known as Hygieia. But because Hygieia and similar C-type asteroids represent such a tiny part of the asteroid belt itself, the belt that contains roughly around 2 million asteroids over 1 kilometer in size, statistically, this doesn't actually add up. It does not really make sense. How could a 10 kilometer C-type asteroid strike planet Earth? especially if not a lot of them exist in the asteroid belt today. Now, once again, there's obviously a lot of C-type asteroids, but most of them are not in that size range. And that's what sort of confused the scientists for many, many years now. Although, a quick side note, a lot of near-Earth asteroids, like Ryugu right here, are actually C-type asteroids. And they do come really close to our planet. But once again, none of them are in that 10 kilometer side range. All of them, without exception, are at least 10 times smaller. And so that's sort of where the mystery lies. Where exactly did this asteroid originally come from? And to try to solve this, they essentially had to employ the NASA's Pleiades supercomputer. They developed a model using 130,000 different asteroids and then ran the simulation trying to see what happens to various types of asteroids over time. And here, what they discovered is that over time, because of the interactions with other asteroids, slight gravitational perturbations, and a lot of pressure from the Sun itself, something we usually refer to as the Yarkovsky effect, once in a while, at least one of these asteroids, very large asteroids, entered what the scientists in this paper refer to as the dynamic escape hatch, which is sort of like a gravitational instability that causes the asteroid to suddenly change its orbit. And when this happens, it can suddenly get propelled to a completely different destination, which is exactly what happened to these two other asteroids that I previously mentioned that ended up traveling from the outskirts of the solar system to the inner solar system and eventually getting stuck in the orbit here. But once inside this escape hatch position, it has a chance of getting a slight kick from one of the planets, which can then sort of force it to collide with another planet. All of this is sort of related to this other video I made on the channel a few months ago, where the scientists realized that there's actually something called interplanetary superhighway that's formed by various gravitational interactions between planets. And we can technically use this superhighway to easily transfer an object from one planet to another by barely using any fuel at all. But because this is such a dynamic system and because it always changes, it's actually extremely difficult to try to simulate this particular pathway. But because there are millions of asteroids, at least one of them has a chance to occasionally move into the escape hatch and get propelled by planets to smack into something else. And 66 million years ago, that something else was planet Earth. But once the model was ran, the results suggested that a collision between a rock that's about 10 kilometers in size and also carbonaceous in nature, basically similar to the one that destroyed the dinosaurs, 
should actually happen on planet Earth approximately every 250 million years. Which is really interesting, because first of all this is good news. It means that we have at least 200 million years to prepare for the next one. While at the same time confirming the event that was discovered a few years ago, the large crater discovered in Australia that was also created by a rock at least 10 kilometers in size, with the event here happening approximately 300 million years ago, or roughly around 250 million years before the event that hit Mexico. Which means that their model sort of makes sense. It does seem to predict the chance for these large 10 kilometer collisions pretty well. But where exactly could this have come from? Was it from the asteroid belt or from some other region in the solar system? Well, in this case, the analysis is based on the size and the composition. And statistically, it could not have come from the same region as these smaller rocks, from the inner asteroid belt. It has to have come from the region on the outskirts of the asteroid belt, where we do find a large amount of different C-type asteroids that are normally anywhere from just a few kilometers across up to about several hundred kilometers across. But unfortunately, we still don't really know which family of asteroids this one belonged to. What we do know is that its orbit was very likely on the outskirts much closer to Jupiter, with the average distance being about 2.5 astronomical units away from the Sun. But luckily for us, maybe sometime next year, we might actually hear more about the potential origins of this asteroid and possibly even find one of its family members, or basically one of the cousins or brothers or sisters that it most likely separated from. And the reason I'm saying this is because of this mission right here that's launching in October of this year, known as Lucy. Lucy is going to be a multi-year mission, and we'll actually talk more about this in some of the future videos, but one of its first destinations is going to be a really interesting, relatively large C-type asteroid known as 52246 Donald Johansson, named after the famous paleontologist who co-discovered Lucy, the fossil of a famous Australopithecus that most likely was one of our ancestors living approximately 3.2 million years ago. And so in the next few years, it's actually going to pass very, very close to this particular asteroid and it's going to have a chance to investigate it and to study some of the composition, which might be just enough information for us to figure out if this is indeed one of the potential family members of the dinosaur killer asteroid and if also, maybe, this is indeed where it actually came from. Although we might not actually know anything about this until maybe 2025, 2026, when the flyby occurs and when we actually get to take some of the photos. But so anyway, a pretty interesting analysis and of course a really important peace of mind when it comes to these large rocks possibly destroying planet Earth. It does look like we still have approximately 200 million years before next such collision occurs. But when it comes to small rocks, the collision with these happens much more frequently. As a matter of fact, anything that's approximately 1 kilometer in size does have a chance to collide with planet Earth every 500,000 years or so. So we still need to find technologies and find ways to try to divert these asteroids if we find one on a collision path. Just to make sure we don't actually end up like these guys. Anyway, on that note, well, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all of the relevant links in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.